follow-up with the four girls that you focused on? Because this is shot almost three years ago. Right. Do you know how yeah. Doing, or? Yeah. Well, S we just had a big uh, we just had a big premiere party up in Portland, so STS got to see some of them there. Do you think? I think they look from the Portland. Yeah. So she was asking if we follow up with any of the girls, and um, I think Arnie has stayed in touch with Misty, and she is doing really well. I think she's living near Portland, and she came to the premiere and wants to get involved with the camp. And then both Amelia and Palace, the youngest ones, are still involved as students in the after-school program. Amelia went on to form a band that got really popular with a friend of hers who ended up moving to Canada, so it was really sad when they broke up, but they like put out a record and they like themselves and they sold it and they had this huge following of like all these kind of older punk guys and it was really cool. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and it's cool because the, I think a lot of people get the wrong impression of Raven, the keyboardist in Amelia's band, like all oh, that girl looks so bored and they feel bad for her, but she, like goes to rock camp every term we have an after school program and um, she's the same way no matter where she is no matter what she does no matter what's going on she's always just kind of bored or she just looks bored I think she's just that way so uh, I don't think she was having as bad of a time as it looks like because like I mean, she loves the drums and she puts her head on the snare all the time just like oh but anyway um, and then Laura she it's awesome because she's applying to colleges now and she's 18 she asked me to write a letter of recommendation, so I was really happy to be able to do that. And then she also called and was like, "Can I? am I old enough to volunteer this summer? And she wants to come out and be a volunteer, which is really cool. Um, that's what we love is like when the kids like kind of stick around, they become interns and then volunteer. So it's a really cool program to get involved with, I think. And that's what they're doing. Great. Yeah. Um, since the girls are already in a delicate fate, you know, being vulnerable towards each other, I guess, how did you, um, did they feel, were they welcoming to you just sitting in the room videotaping, or did they have to warm up to you? What steps did you take to get them to still be themselves, knowing that there's a camera in the room? Right, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really great question, and something that, uh, that we thought a lot about. Arnie and I, you know, talked to each other a lot, and then we talked to, you know, SDS and, and Winter and, and Jennifer and other, you know, the other women who ran the camp, and and uh, you know, sort of set up certain boundaries, and and uh, you know, there were certain things that that just didn't get filmed at all. Certain things that could only be filmed by women, and not Marty and I could shoot them. And there were so there were two uh, women who were working with us during the week of the camp who who uh, did a lot of the shooting, and then uh, we did, you know, we did presentations at the beginning with the staff and the girls as well, letting them know that, you know, our our job there was to tell the story of what they were going through and what they were doing. And if we were starting, if they felt like we were starting to interfere with what they were doing, that uh, that they just had to do this. And we would, then we would stop shooting. We would just, you know, no questions asked. You know, the, the, the power is in your hands and we'll just stop shooting and walk out of the room. And, um, and then also the fact that we had spent so much time meeting so many of the girls who were coming to the camp. A lot of them knew us already, and you know we we'd spend you know hours interviewing them, maybe hours interviewing their parents, hours interviewing their friends. We you know follow them around, go to the mall, go to the park, whatever. And so so we knew a lot of the people at the camp quite well by the time the camp actually happened, and so. I just kind of felt like we were sort of uncles who were just sort of like wandering around with these cameras and, and we were pretty easy to ignore. And uh, and we were happy to, you know, if somebody asked us, you know, what the, about the camera, about the microphones, we would, you know, stop shooting for a while and then talk to them about that. And uh, just one other thing we did, like, I'm not remembering right now. <laughs> But yeah, so we, we definitely put a lot of, uh, of thought and effort into it. And, you know, SDS got videotaped a lot, so she should definitely have a crack at answering this question as well. I mean, you know a lot more how it felt than I do. Um, I did want to say that uh, it was really hard to teach when there's like a camera like right there, <laughs> and you're just like, uh, 
it's like very distracting. And then I think that you were saying that you had a chance to be um, filmed teaching and like you were on the other, the receiving end of that. And it's like really, really hard because you want them to feel like, like we're used to having press at the camp, but we're used to being able to push the press out, but it was a lot harder to like, we didn't, I wanted them to be able to get enough stuff in the documentary that they were trying to make, you know what I mean? So it was like this hard compromise. But uh, I think eventually though, the, one of my favorite parts of the movie is Palace uh, freaking out while that, like totally forgetting there was a camera person there. And like there's an actual adult in the room with her when she like grabbed the microphone and like, I don't know what she did, like maybe threatened to bite that girl, I'm not sure. But um, but I thought that was kind of cool that you guys were really good at being invisible and they totally forgot that there was any kind of adult there at all. She just kept filming, like didn't try to stop or anything, or no, later she did. Yeah, can I? Yeah, totally. Finish off that story? Yeah, that's a really, that's a perfect example of, of how oblivious they could become to our presence where that, that fight where you know, the counselor walks out of the room, or the band manager walks out of the room, Palace grabs the microphone, and they start fighting over it. And as they continue to fight, they started sort of leaning over the drum kit, and it looked like one of them was going to get hurt. So Arnie was shooting that scene, and he he just, you know, stopped shooting and went over and put his hand on one of their shoulders and said, okay, you guys need to stop. And they all just like deer in the headlights. They were just like, oh my God, who is this? Where, where did you come from? They, they had completely forgot he was there. And then once that happened, they all just like sat down and were very quiet. And Arnie realized he, like there was no point in staying in there and shooting anymore because they weren't going to be natural at all. They were completely aware of his presence. So he left and had somebody else come in and shoot for a while. Then they got back into the whole work of, of, of putting the song together or fighting or whatever they were doing and, uh, and forgot about the camera.